well to develop our work performance literacy communities. We need to understand how we can actually schedule this in to the work of those literacy communities. We'll have that conversation with them.
volumes of press that people are providing, photographs and all those sorts of things, chatting on the image or user-friendly documents. And uh, certainly when uh, I think some of my colleagues in the NHS accounts, there's been a lot more um, kind of you know, user-friendly uh, and more of you the know, telephone feedback is really important providing these sorts of documents. But it, it's on its way to that. Um, I think in terms of the information that's in there, I know that members of this and other boards will find the information presented in this sort of way quite helpful actually because um, often we get into all sorts of um, tangled webs when we start talking <coughs> about um, budget savings, all of those sorts of things. But I'm, I'm hoping that this is presented in such a way that a lay person can get a really good feel for how we're using those resources. And that's really the aim that I've got. Just running through some of the, some of the key highlights. Um, in terms of the, the vision set out uh, very early on in the paper in more detail, I think that's important in terms of the aspirations, in terms of where we need to go to, in terms of our social care. Uh, budget, uh, page 138, and again, a really uh, accessible way that people see how the spend is, 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 uh, is set out. Uh, the sorts of efficiencies that, we're, that we are working to, or we're working to during the, during the 13 to 14. And uh, again, a section which I think is really helpful for more for all. In terms of we said we would do certain things, this is what we did. Again, I think uh, we've had feedback pieces from the public to say that's helpful to, uh, to know that we're doing the things that we said we would be doing. And then, uh, obviously, later on, uh, after that, we've got the future plans, which gives a real kind of feel for the direction uh, we were working in the future plans. So, again, uh, giving a real kind of picture of the depth of tra transformation and change that, uh, that we're going through as a So again, the same as last time around, uh, you know, we had great uh, comments from anybody uh, and uh, that really would be used to to help us uh, change it. This is different than the last paper that said about our partnership board insofar as this is my responsibility as part of, as part of board responsibility. So really it's, uh, it's not easier for me to make this easy to change. Thank you. Thank you. some insight into it as far as um, a lot of the people that we interviewed as part of this or that, that responded to the question were people with assistive technology as opposed to a whole range of services. But that wouldn't be partially explained to I think we need to do some more work on this, on this in terms of really understanding why it is that people don't feel safe and secure now. Is there a relationship with our folks on trying to enable people to be more independent and providing them direct support, I don't know, or is it really a view of how people feel about their local? Because it, in essence, this question is asked in the context of how people feel about where they live, as opposed to how they feel about the services. So I think it's quite, quite important for someone to have a look at. Take the point, it's not where we want it to be, I think we managed to get that. Yeah, it was a kind of an idea that it felt like a very
Okay, thank you, Claire. And I guess my contribution to this is demonstrating that this is uh, a commitment shared across the health and social care community. So it could actually be any one of us um, to do it in this way. And, and I suppose I'd start this slide by saying, well, if Claire's just described the burning platform, then this represents the burning ambition of the system to actually kind of put it right. But it should be about getting the finances right. But completely, it is about getting the model of care delivery right and for the people who use our services. So, uh, in a bizarre way, I'm actually just down to the bottom of that slide, draw your attention to the importance of supporting the population of Wirral and um, take um, the right level to put more and more responsibility to their own health care needs. So, um, supporting self care, but also ensuring that the investment in the right level is an intervention proving resilience in communities and ensure Fiona can add to that if um, in this fashion we need to. But the three areas of focus for the Vision 2018 work and then on those areas, planned care, unplanned care, and the conditions and context needs as described up there. And in very simple terms, I think we encapsulate planned care as those um, elements primarily of health care, but there will be some social care that um, are planned, that are um, arranged through referral into the system uh, and ensuring that we have designed those services um, to be uh, as cost effective but as also to deliver the right level of quality and responsibility to the use of the services. Unplanned care for those people for whom an urgent response is required, apart from a select group that I'll come on to in a moment. So any of us um, across the population who need the health and social care system to respond rapidly and appropriately. Uh, and if we get that right, then we avoid duplication, we avoid unnecessary treatments, we uh, also, I hope, um, avoid unnecessary attending in hospital and indeed admission to hospital um, which has significant costs. And on the right hand side, um, uh, what we've described as ongoing care for those people with long term conditions and complex needs, who primarily will be older people, but not exclusively, uh, as there are children and um, in between in that group as well. And I simplify that group in my mind as those people who are effectively already in our system. We're providing a service to them that should be a comprehensive joint up pathway already, most of which therefore should be planned, and we should be, wherever possible, avoiding unplanned uh, instances. I, we should be escalating our support to them in advance of it becoming a real problem and falling into the need for emergency response. Um, all of those areas are important, but in terms of priority, I think we're clear that uh, we have to get it right for, uh, for those people in the ongoing care package, because that's where um, the spend um, is in danger of running out of control if we don't get it right. By reducing duplication, by reducing unnecessary emissions to hospital, for example, by shortening hospital emissions wherever possible, that's how we'll get the money need to deal with unplanned care is going to be by that sort of plan care. Um, there's a complicated um, government structure that underpins all of this, and I'm not going to go into the detail. We can quite happily circulate the access to the health care package. So I guess the two key things I draw to your attention from that slide are that we've put in place a strategic leadership group, which is essentially uh, a chief executive and director level to oversee and drive this program, not to get into the details, but to make sure we've got somewhere where we can um, set the highlights of the vision, but also sort out those issues that are like, getting in the way of the delivery. And we've agreed that we need to underpin this by a program management approach. So between the organisations, we need to marshal our troops in effect to put emphasis behind delivery, less talking, more getting it done. And finally, so detail too far, but that um, describes that we've put in place a number of work streams that the initial slide described uh, around plan care and plan care and conditions, but also some enabling groups dealing with things like <coughs> states and information. And uh, 
this slide uh, and work being incomplete, but in essence says where the rain is happening by happening by producing these entities and these directives that kind of lead people to receive programs supported by senior level and experienced program managers and supported by actually in each of those entities. And that will demonstrate um, I hope the commitment of all the health social care agencies around the patch, but also ensure the